What's up guys? I'm gonna show you how I make my favorite type of mono tub that produces very well. These particular tubs are 20 quarts as they're my favorite size to use and you can get these Sterilite gasket tubs at most Walmarts. I paid $8 a tub for these ones. So to make this style of mono tub it's pretty simple. All you need is a tub a ruler, a marker, and a 1.5 inch hole saw. Okay, to position the holes on the side, you wanna find the edge of this chamfer right here. That's what this angled cut is called. This leading edge right here is what you want to measure from. So going from there, take your ruler and place it at three and a half inches. Go ahead and make one mark there and move it over a little bit and make another mark there. Now from here, go ahead and draw a line connecting those two dots. This line should be three and a half inches away from the chamfered edge in all positions. Now if you notice, this lines it up with about four inches from the actual bottom of the tub. Now you're gonna wanna go in four inches from the side of the tub here. I like to place something, something flat against the edge right here so I can see where four inches is. Once I have that, I go ahead and I mark a cross right there. And that's where you drill. Now we do the same thing from the other side. And you should have two holes four inches from the bottom and four inches from the side. A trick that I like to do, if you're going to make a lot of these, is once you get these positions marked out, just cut a piece of paper that fits inside of these two tabs right there and you line it up with the chamfer at the bottom and from there you cut two holes in the paper that correlate with the locations of the cut that you're making on the mono tub which allows you to quickly mark locations on the tub. Since I do have a template I'm going to go ahead and use that There we go, we have two dots. Now go ahead and repeat that on the other side. And you'll see why you don't want to be measuring these if you're doing a whole bunch of these. Very simple, you have two dots. Now that's all I mark on my tubs. I don't worry about marking these. I'll show you how I deal with them when we get to drilling. Okay, at this point you're ready to drill your mono tub. What I like to do is take my still air box and put it inside of it when I'm drilling. That way it collects all the plastic shavings. I'd recommend getting something like this or doing it on a hardwood floor that you can easily vacuum, if not in your garage or workspace. So we're going to go ahead and start drilling these holes. The important thing is not to apply too much pressure. I like this little drill that I got off Amazon. It cost about 10 or $15. I can put a link to it in the description. You charge it with a micro USB and it's not powerful enough to really eat through this plastic because these tubs have a tendency to crack. And you can hear in this drill when you're pushing too hard pretty easily. So we've got a one and a half inch hole saw on it and we're gonna go ahead and drill at least two side holes. Start by lining up your drill with the mark you have. You want to start the hole by putting the centering bit through the plastic. After that, just continue drilling the hole and make sure you don't push too hard because these tubs have a tendency of cracking and you don't want to be wasting money on tubs. If 
you notice, I, I do a back and forth motion like this. I find that helps the teeth of the hole saw eat into the plastic. Okay, now we'll continue over on this hole and do the same thing. Make sure you remove this piece of plastic before you drill the next hole. Okay, now both these side holes are drilled. We'll go ahead and move on to the top holes on the on the short side. The way I locate this is I just eyeball it in the center of this right here, and I put my finger here, and I give it about a finger length gap. And that gives you enough room to put your tape down and clean off the burr at the end, which I'll demonstrate in just a minute. So remember, finger length right here between the latch and the hole saw and then line it up like that and remember don't start the hole saw until you take your finger away of course very simple and repeat on the other side and then all the drilling is done Sometimes the plastic powder and shavings builds up inside of this. I like to wipe it out. Again, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to drill a hole. You don't want this spinning with your finger inside of the hole saw. Alright, that's it for the drilling. Now I'll show you how to shave these burrs off. Okay guys, once you got all your holes cut out, you'll notice there's some burrs. You want to get rid of all the plastic shavings. You don't have to, but they annoy me, so I just put them back inside of the tub that I drilled it in. So, to get rid of these burrs, you're going to want to take a sharp knife and cut around the edge. But be careful because you can easily cut too deep and get the knife lodged in and you end up making the hole looking all bad. And no one wants that. So I'll show you the technique that I use that works pretty well. I like to use the blade on my Leatherman. It's nice and sharp and it's got a thin profile. We'll start by cutting the inside of the hole with this blade. So what I do is I insert it. I try to keep the blade almost flat against, against the plastic right there. And then I just go in a circular motion. And you'll notice how it's cutting the burr right off on the inside. Just go in circles, don't go too fast, there's no rush. Okay, once you have the inside cut, then you cut the outside. A very similar technique, as you see I'm keeping the blade almost, almost completely flat against the plastic here, and I'm trying to go in a circle with the hole that we've cut. Sometimes you gotta switch around and go the other direction. And there you go. And you can feel when the burr's there, so just 
doesn't have to be completely perfect, but as long as it's flat enough that when you adhere your filter, it will, it will make a proper seal. Okay, these holes are a little bit tricky to get because they're close up there. That's why I recommend the finger gap. You can actually put them lower, which would probably make it a little easier, but I like to keep them as high up as I can practically have them. And I'll explain the reasoning for these hole placements in a moment. So to start off, it's pretty similar. You want to go flat. But then you'll notice you kind of get cut off right there. And if you if you keep going, you're gonna you're gonna have to angle your blade, which ends up slicing into the plastic. So what I like to do is flip it over and start from the other side and continue. That's how you get the inside burr, and then the outside burr. You're gonna have to come down like that, and then flip it around and come come back the other way. just the final bit at the top of the hole right there. So I like to put my blade flat and guide it along with my thumb. That slices it right off. There you go. Just repeat it for all the holes. And then you're done with the preparation of your monotub. So now you're done with your monotub. You need some filters on it. There's a lot of different filters you can use. You can put polyfill in the holes. You can buy filters made by companies that are designed for this, but what I personally like is just some micropore tape. In my older video, I went over this crazy overlapping method that I used to use, but it's kind of really pointless. What you do is you just take some micropore, put it in the hole. Grab another piece, stick it on the hole, and that's it. And that makes a pretty good seal. And the reason I use these tubs is because it creates like a semi sterile, not really, but a clean enough environment that when I put it straight into fruiting condition, I spawn the tub and I don't open it until I take the fruits out, which makes the spores from the fruits pretty clean. And that's why I like these gasket tubs. Okay, why do we put the holes where we put them? As we all know, mushrooms produce carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So, when you have your monotub, you have two holes here, and two holes here. Technically four, because there's two on the back. So you'll have your substrate with a bunch of mushrooms growing out of it. And all these mushrooms are filling up the tub with carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide ends up falling out of these holes because again it's heavier than air and as the gas is falling out of these holes it creates a vacuum inside of the tub which then pulls fresh air in through the top holes that's why monotubs are automated to begin with and when you see all those weird automated monotubs that have like tubes going in them from humidifiers and fans attached to them and stuff they're all completely pointless because monotubs are designed to be automated just by using physics 